welcome to Help of Christians. I'm Antoinette, and today I wanted to talk to you about some warnings God is giving us. If you haven't subscribed, liked, and all those things, please do it so we can get this message out to more people. Thanks for that in advance. Okay, and for all who already do it, thank ya. First, let's pray together, okay? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the, name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so some warnings that I feel like God has been giving me to prepare for this coming time, I wanted to share with you. He gave me a dream, and then as I always try to correlate them with prophetic messages I've been hearing, um, and God does that in an amazing way, so here I am going to share that with you. Um, God has been saying that there is going to be an escalation coming with a lot of uh, world events, especially within our country, and that there is going to be, um, whatever you want to call it, the bad guys, the cabal, whoever, however you want to call it, um, they're going to try one more kill shot, one more chance to enslave us and to capture us. They feel the power slipping away. So they're going all in at this point. And God has been saying in prophetic messages, who are you going to trust? Him, what he's been telling us through prophetic word and through the word of scripture in the Bible, or what the media is telling us, what the world is telling us. He actually said in a prophetic word to Julie Green, um, when everything goes black, who are you going to run to? Who are you going to believe? So many people are unfortunately still asleep. Many people are still not aware that we are in a great move of prophetic words and many different prophets trying, to, uh, God trying to reach us through many different prophets around the world right now. Um, a lot of people have a religious spirit and they don't want to touch it. They don't. They don't understand it. Uh, the church hasn't taught enough about the prophets and what prophecy is. So people are scared of it. Um, they don't even know it's available to them right now that God is giving us this gift. And they're still asleep. They're somehow not connecting all these dots from the last few years of craziness, if not perceiving it before that. Um, and and they're still under the spell of the media and they're going to the, to the fake news to get what they think is reality. And God is saying, you know, that everything's about to get turned upside down. Um, so in that, of course, the enemy is going to try and confuse us more. Um, there's just going to be a lot of turbulence. And we've seen that if we want to take the example of what just happened or is still happening with Russia, the media is warmongering, warmongering. Uh, they're going to, they've made Putin out to be this, uh, you know, basically a Hitler and they're going to keep working on making us as a people hate him because they want the American people to agree to go into a new war. But God has already said it's not time for that. Um, Catholic prophecy though has been warning us about the third world war, right? And uh, some of the current prophet prophecies that are coming out are correlating with that. So that throws in another level of confusion. But if you look at Protestant prophecy, uh, God has been saying that, yes, there's some craziness going on, but this is not the third world war. This is not it. God's already taken care of this. We're just kind of walking through it now. So if you're looking at all those pieces separate, you're not getting the full picture, right? Um, don't look at the media at all because they're just lying. And God has said that many times, the media is lying. So don't even look at them. But if you put the Catholic prophecy and the Protestant prophecy together, we're getting a fuller picture. And unfortunately, a lot of people aren't doing that. We're so separated um, that we're not giving the other a chance. And we are one body and we are God's working on bringing us back. So that's probably why he gives half and half like that, because um, we need each other. But 
that's for a whole nother video. <laughs> um, so just moving forward, uh, if you are not familiar with end times prophecy uh, and eschatology, which is the study of the end times, I came across um, Father Bill Halbing. He did a Bible study on Gog and Magog, which is a big piece of the end times. Um, and he puts it into the perspective of it's long. It's actually like 12 sessions of an hour each because um, he goes really, really thoroughly. And he goes through uh, the Jewish understanding, the Protestant understanding, the Catholic understanding and world events. So this is only like maybe a year old Bible study that he goes through. And it's very interesting to see how he's connecting certain things. Um, some current events I haven't even heard of that connect to um, what's going on, what end times is uh, looks like and what our eschatology is. So um, that's just a little side note. It's a little long, but I put it, I speed up the um, playback to like 1.25 and, and it's thorough. So you can sit there with your Bible and you have, you know, a couple, do one a day, you have a couple weeks of a Bible study and it's really informative of, um, so that's, I'll put that in the description box, of course. So anyway, moving on, there is much more to the current events than we are seeing. God has repeated this numerously in the most recent um, prophecies that I've come across. There are so much more than what we're seeing. We're seeing pieces. The media is telling you one thing. Like I said, Catholic prophecies leading you one way, Protestant prophecies leading you the other. And we need to realize that, first of all, God's not giving the enemy the full playbook. Second of all, while we're separated, we're not getting the full understanding of what's going on. And third of all, if you are just looking at a current prophecy or even an old prophecy, but not going to God specifically and saying, okay, God, talk to me about this. Tell me, help me to understand and going to him with the Bible and spending time and just, you know, trying to understand the prophecy and not just reading it for what its face value is, then you're not going to get the full picture either. So that's another thing that God has been showing me is to go back um, and just spend some time with these things. He's been saying nothing is as it seems. You're not getting the full picture. So you just need to trust in me and I'm going to guide you through it. So um, he's also said through a couple of different uh, prophets recently that those that hold on to the end through all this turmoil that's about to come, um, they are going to have a stronger reward in the end. So what exactly that reward is, I don't know. Maybe it's different for everybody's situation and their own personal life. So just getting into the first big warning that God has given me, he gave me a dream about um, basically slander, slander coming. So um, I'm not gonna go through the whole dream because it was very, I really had to sit there and um, research every part of it to kind of get the full meaning. And if you don't know dreams, uh, very well. There are 21 dreams in the Bible and every single one is from God, even the scary ones, even what we would call a nightmare. <laughs> um, so every dream is from God and um, I can link you to a couple of good Bible studies on that if you'd like. Um, but just moving forward, just assuming that you understand this. Um, when I got this particular dream, God's main message in it, was about the slander coming. So um, connecting that to what I've just said in the start of this video, um, as these, these crazy things come and we're staying with God and we're staying to what his prophetic word has said and what he has told us in our own personal time with him, people are not gonna understand it because they're still asleep, because they're still under the spell and they're not gonna understand why you uh, are not freaking out like they are. You're, they're not gonna understand why you're believing some prophet and what? not what the news yeah. is saying. Yeah, we don't wanna freak out. We wanna trust in the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Say it. Jesus, I trusted you. Okay. The dream that I had was about spiritual attacks coming from the enemy, both physical and 
spiritually manifesting in the natural, right? So the enemy obviously uses people to attack you, right? Um, so the Holy Spirit was basically telling me that I need to stay close to him. He flies on spiritual thermals, the thermals in the air, like a hawk or an eagle would fly on. Um, and that is the vantage point. He flies effortlessly in these thermals. He uh, can see he can see a lot of what we can't see. And if we are with him, we are at this 10,000 foot view vantage point. And all we have to do is just stay with him and be still and, and get into the word of God, get into the Bible. He keeps saying that, um, print out prophecies and have them ready for, you know, when a time of blackout comes and you cannot get on the internet, you have them there. You have, make sure you have your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, please let me know and I will send you one. Um, but assuming that you do make sure you're getting into that every single day and, um, just sitting with it and just letting God speak to you from it. So I'm going to read a prophetic word given to Gianna Talone Sullivan um, from Our Lady of Emmitsburg. And this was given on March 22nd, or I'm sorry, March 28th, 2022. Uh, Our Lady says, What is important now is to know that you are not alone. Be strong. The armor of truth, which years ago I addressed to you, with which to shield yourself, should now be in place. God the Father has sent his angels to encircle you, and Jesus dwells within you. Keep watch over your heart and never allow the flame of his love dwindle. Guard it and wrap it like a cocoon to give you the comfort of this great treasure he has given to you. Do not allow fear to filter through your mind and cause you anxiety. This is what is happening. You are allowing fear to overpower your inner peace. Instead of being distracted by division, and the uncertainty of the ways your children are living, return to the center of your heart where Jesus dwells and draw strength through the infusion of his love. Take the time to pray quietly. Spending time with Jesus in the quiet of your heart will speak volumes to you. You will become inebri inebriated by the infusion of his love and you will gain the knowledge and wisdom to make firm decisions. It is critical now that you keep faithful to your prayerful ways and do not scatter. Our Lady is leading us to this quiet prayer time with God. Um, so that's something heavy that I've been seeing in prophecy probably the last month is get quiet in the Bible with God and just wait on the Lord. And also for several months now, lots of prophecies yeah. on how the angels are encircling us. There are more angels now. God has sent so many angels to protect his people and to guide his people than ever before in history. So thanks be to God for that. And then there's two different, right around this time I had this dream, there was two prophets that had, um, well, there's three, I guess, that had prophetic words about slander and how to react to slander. So one of them, his name is Chris Yoon. Um, if you're new to prophecy um, and you're just kind of breaking out of um, the, two, the, the old reality and realizing kind of where we are in, in the world, or if you're trying to reach the people in your life that way, Chris Yoon is a prophet that would be great to share with people. He's very down to earth. Um, he connects per, uh, you know, current events beautifully. He's really good at using common sense with prophecy and the Bible. I don't know how else to explain that, um, but I will put a uh, link to his message in the description box below. Um, but if you feel like you have a serious call on your life, or if you're already deep into prophecy and you understand it, there is another prophet that has had just put out a prophecy. She did a great Bible study uh, with her prophecy on um, David, David becoming anointed and how, you know, from the get-go, he kind of had slander against him and how to overcome the slander in your life um, in, a, in a prophetic and biblical way. And her name is JoLynn Whitaker. I will put her link to, uh, the link to her prophecy in 
the description box below. She has um, weekly, I think she does two or three prophetic calls. Um, she does a teaching with the prof prophecy um, and they're long. They're like an hour to two hours long. And again, that's another one that I fast forward through, uh, not fast forward, but I speed up the speed to like 1.25. Um, and sometimes I have to like break it up but I feel like she's really, really anointed. And I've, I have personally felt, um, I have, I've seen some things change in my life after um, being in, in uh, agreement with some of her prophecies. So anyway, in this prophecy, she says um, about those who are slandering you, they want what you have. They can't do what you're doing. They don't understand where your peace is coming from because you're in the word of God. You've kept that relationship strong. You've been listening to his prophets. They don't understand how you're making it while there's shortages or whatever is coming in the economy because you've prepared the way God has told you. They're not understanding why you're not freaking out how the dollar is falling and inflation is rising because God's already told you gold, silver, and cryptos for the time being. Um, they're not going to understand why you're still in the church as things, all sorts of crazy stuff's about to come out about the church because God cleans the church out first. So be prepared for that. Um, be, but we know that we don't leave Jesus because of Judas, right? They're not going to understand that and they're going to come against you and you're going to hear, you might hear things. And we just have to understand that God has prepared us and we have been obedient and we can't, um, lose our peace because they have none, right? Um, so uh, she also goes into, if you feel like you have a big calling on your life for maybe a ministry or a business or a big move, um, she goes into the teaching on how David, um, he had this mission, he had the anointing. And when you have that, uh, people are gonna be intimidated. Obviously, this comes from the devil. The devil doesn't want to see the signs and wonders. He doesn't want to see the miracles. He doesn't want God's blessings to come forth. She says in this, uh, God gave her this specific understanding. Were it not for the destiny on David's life, were it not for the words spoken over David by the prophet Samuel, and were it not for the wild potential of the moment, all of the, the slander against him could have been chalked up to sibling, sibling rivalry when he stepped up to battle Goliath, right? But that's when the devil knew that this is when the anointing is really gonna shine. And uh, the devil was trying to take a shot at David, right? He knew that the anointing meant something big. And when he was gonna step up to this um, uncircumcised Philistine, right? He could have said, he was, you know, he could have talked talk nasty to his his brother who was trying to chop him down um, and he could have been distracted but he wasn't he ignored it and he moved forward with the mission he felt like he had to defend God right now the devil knows that big stuff is coming God is getting ready to set people up with um, inheritances from ancestors that's what the wealth transfer is about go to um, reach back to your ancestors. Um, he's going to give people new businesses. He's going to give people uh, other types of wealth transfer, land, homes. Um, there's going to be many removals. So you might be replaced in some of these places that the people were removed that did not, you know, gain that position in an honorable way. Or if simply you're about to wake up and you're about to set the world on fire in some other way. So God is about to do some things and the devil knows this and he is scrambling right now. Um, so he is trying to wear out the saints. He's trying to wear out the holy ones, as it says in Daniel 7:25. but we cannot retreat. This is, we are victors. We are not victims as God has been saying through prophetic word. We need to declare these things and not uh, give in to the fear and the anxiety, as Our Lady was saying in that word to uh, Gianna. So be still and know that I am God is one of the um, Bible verses that God has been giving to me a lot lately. And how can we do that if we do not actually know God, right? Be still because he can do it. He can overcome anything coming against us. 
So we need to be still and trust that he'll do it. And then Isaiah 54, 17 is another Bible verse that God has been speaking to me a lot. And I'm going to read it for you. Isaiah 54, 17 says, Every weapon fashioned against you shall fail. Every tongue that brings you to trial, you shall prove false. This is the lot of the servants of the Lord. Lord, their vindication from me, oracle of the Lord. So we just need to trust. Trust that God has got this and no weapon formed against us will prevail. Um, and that's yeah. his promise to us. Okay, and I'm going to leave you with this last word from our Lord Jesus to Gisela Cardia on January 1st, 2022. Um, in these, Jesus says, in these intense times, you've seen despair, death, and slander around you. Perhaps you have thought that you have been abandoned by me. You are constantly ready to complain, yet I have consoled you many times and you have never noticed this. And not only have I given you important teachings, but you have not paid attention to these either. My children, brothers and sisters, God is waiting for you in love and joy. I have separated you in order to help you reflect. I have tested you every holy day and you have not always reflected. How much peace and joy I would like to give to these often hardened hearts. I would like you to reflect, but how many times have I asked for your hand in order to lead you toward calm waters and instead you have preferred the storm, believing that you are capable of solving everything without my help. But remember that I alone am the way, the truth, and the life, and I alone can help you. And then he goes on to say, later on in the message my children my time is near enter the ark of the covenant of peace love and fraternity only thus will you be able to overcome the storm that is coming i have taught you many things during this period and perhaps by calmly rereading my words you will be able to understand my will i want to see you all enter the kingdom now I bless you in the name of the Most Holy Trinity. Always be ready to fight together with me, my angels, my archangels, and my blessed mother, and we will succeed in defeating absolute evil and opening the doors to infinite good. So I just thought that that was a really important one. You know, uh, sometimes we overlook things when we, there are so many prophecies right now. Thanks be to God for that, but sometimes it's easy to just read it at face value and then just move on. Um, so when I was kind of researching for this video and just for my own personal understanding of where God was teaching on, um, you know, reacting to the slander that comes against you, I, I found this one and I don't remember ever reading about, you know, God um, speaking on the slander coming against us. And here he is saying, in this particular one, he's connecting everything I've already said and he was already telling me, um, the storm is here. Actually, he says to be to be able to overcome the storm that is coming. Remember what I've taught you. Calmly reread my words. So um, he was already leading me personally there to just go back and reread the prophecies he's already given. Don't be in such a rush to go to the brand new ones. Sit with what God has given you and just try and really soak it in and. Um, you know, make a connection to it, make an understanding to it a little bit deeper. Um, that's why I've been trying to pull out some older ones and seeing, you know, where we are in the timeline and what God's saying to me personally and how to prepare for the future. Um, so anyway, I hope this blessed you. I hope you are encouraged by it and just knowing he's got us, you know, be still and know he is the winner. God never loses ever in history, right? So um, thanks for checking this out. God bless you all.